When we hear the word astronomy, we think about stars, galaxies, nebula, and the planets within our solar system. But many of us forget that Earth is one of those planets. Earth is the only place in the entire universe that we know that has intelligent life and just life in general. And Earth has been through so much history that it wouldn't be fair to squeeze Earth in just one episode. So join me now for part one of a three-part episode and let's learn about our home planet. If we could go back in time, four and a half billion years ago, could we imagine all the history this one planet would go through? Object collisions, volcanic activity, the breaking of the supercontinent, the dinosaurs, the dawn of mankind, the pyramids, the Renaissance, Sir Isaac Newton, Albert Einstein, thousands of wars, and here we are today, the only form of intelligent life. Earth has produced all of that. It is our home. Of all the billions and billions of galaxies in our universe, our galaxy, the Milky Way, is part of a super cluster of galaxies called the Local Group. And in our galaxy, among our solar system, resides the most perfect planet, the only planet or object that we know to harbor life. Seventy percent of the Earth's surface is covered in water. Within the first billion years of Earth's history, life appeared in the oceans and began to affect the Earth's atmosphere and surface. Our vast oceans host some of the most amazing life forms on our planet. Thousands of different species of marine life live in the depths of the sea and they play a very important role in our ecosystem. from the greatest depths of the oceans to the rivers that flow through the jungle. Plants are also another form of life, and those plants feed the species of life that live on land. From deer to large elephants, down to our furry little ancestors, to the hot and dry sands of the deserts of Africa, to the oxygen-rich forests of Montana, our planet has various characteristics, and Earth is home to some of the most beautiful wonders the universe has ever made. Earth is the third planet from the Sun. It spins on its axis and rotates once every 23 hours and 56 minutes, making its journey around the Sun once every 365 days. Earth's atmosphere and oceans were formed by volcanic activity and outgassing. But let's go a little further and learn about more how the Earth was formed. When the solar system settled into its current layout about four and a half billion years ago, gravity pulled, swirling gas and dust left over from the solar nebula that clustered into grains, then lumps, boulders, 
and eventually chunks of big enough rock to have their own gravitational field, which we called planetesimals. The Earth is then formed. Earth has a central core, a rocky mantle, and a solid crust. At this point in time, there is no life. Temperatures are extremely hot with frequent volcanic activity. Let us take a look how all of this is possible. As Earth is made, what's really inside? Earth is composed of four main layers, starting with an inner core at the planet's center, enveloped by the outer core, mantle, and crust. The inner core is a solid sphere made of iron and nickel metals, about 759 miles in radius. In between the outer core and the crust is the mantle, the thickest layer. This hot, viscous mixture of molten rock is about 1,800 miles thick and has the consistency of caramel. The outermost layer, Earth's crust, goes about 19 miles deep on average on land. At the bottom of the ocean, the crust is thinner and extends about 3 miles from the seafloor to the top of the mantle. The Earth's crust has constantly changed since its formation, just as life has since its first appearance. The process of plate tectonics continues to shape the Earth's continents and oceans and the life that they harbor. Earth's lithosphere, which includes the crust and upper mantle, is divided into huge plates that are constantly moving. For example, the North American plate moves west over the Pacific Ocean basin, roughly at the rate equal to the growth of our fingernails. This process has been going on for billions of years. The atmosphere of Earth is a layer of gases which we commonly refer to as air. Earth's atmosphere is 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, 0.9% argon, and about 0.03% carbon dioxide with very smaller percentages of other elements. Our atmosphere also contains water vapor. The atmosphere protects life on Earth by creating pressure, allowing for liquid water to exist on Earth's surface absorbing ultraviolet solar radiation, warming the surface through heat retention, which we call our greenhouse effect, and reducing the temperature extremes between day and night, which is known as diurnal temperature variation. Let's take a closer look at the layers of Earth. So the Earth has five layers, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the exosphere. We are currently in the troposphere. It is the lowest layer of our atmosphere starting at ground level and extending upward to about 6.2 miles or 33,000 feet above ground. We humans live in the troposphere and nearly all weather occurs in the lowest layer. Most clouds appear here mainly because 99% of the water vapor in the atmosphere is found in the troposphere. Air pressure drops and temperatures get colder as you continue to climb higher. The next layer up is called the stratosphere. The stratosphere extends from the top of the troposphere roughly 31 miles above the ground. The infamous ozone layer is found within the stratosphere. Ozone molecules in this layer absorb high energy ultraviolet light from the sun, converting the ultraviolet energy into heat. Unlike the troposphere, the stratosphere actually gets warmer the higher you go. That trend of rising temperatures with altitude means that the air in the stratosphere lacks the turbulence and updrafts from the troposphere beneath. Commercial passenger jets actually fly in the lower stratosphere, partly because this less turbulent layer provides a much smoother ride. Above the stratosphere is the mesosphere. It extends upward to a height of about 53 miles above our planet. Most meteors burn up in the mesosphere. Unlike the stratosphere, temperatures once again grow colder as you rise up through the mesosphere. The coldest temperatures in Earth's atmosphere are about 90 degrees Celsius or 130 degrees Fahrenheit. They are found in this top layer. The next layer is the thermosphere. High energy x-rays and UV radiation from the sun are absorbed in the thermosphere, raising its temperature to hundreds or even at times thousands of degrees. However, the air in this layer is so thin that it would feel freezing cold to us. In many ways, the thermosphere is more like outer space than part of our atmosphere. Many satellites actually orbit the Earth in the thermosphere. Variations in the amount of energy coming from the sun exert a power influence on both the height and in the top of this layer, and the temperature within it. Because of this, the top of the thermosphere can be found anywhere between 311 to 621 miles above ground. Ah, we've arrived. The exosphere, the final frontier of Earth's gaseous envelope. As you might imagine, the air in the exosphere is very, very, very thin, making this layer even more space-like than the thermosphere. In fact, 
Earth in the exosphere is constantly, but very gradually, leaking out of Earth's atmosphere in outer space. There is no clear cut upper boundary where the exosphere finally fades away in the space. Our planet's rapid rotation and molten nickel iron core give rise to a magnetic field, which the solar wind distorts into a teardrop shape in space. Earth itself is a gigantic magnet. The magnetic field on Earth is why our compasses always point north, no matter which way you turn it. Even birds can sense Earth's magnetic field. They can tell north from south. They have their own inner compass. But why does Earth have a magnetic field at all? Liquid iron inside the Earth acts like an electrical current. And the electrical current surrounds the Earth and acts like a protective shield to otherwise harmful particles. When solar radiation hits our magnetic field, it diverts charged particles towards our north and south pole, and we see them as the auroras. Woo! That's a lot of information, isn't it? And we have so much more to learn about our home planet. But we have run out of time. Until we meet again, be curious, be creative, and always look up.